Hello guys, this is Martimba Graphics, and in this tutorial we'll create a YouTube subscribe button animation. I've recently posted a video on how to create a YouTube subscribe overlay, but this tutorial is more like a cut down version of it that includes just the subscribe button with a bell icon and of course the cursor as well. So without further ado, let's jump in and start creating this step by step. First, we need our composition, create a new composition, you can name it whatever you want. 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second and 10 seconds for the duration. Click OK. Go to the shape tool and select the round or rectangle tool. Make sure your color is set to red. And draw a shape like that. Something that will be representing our button. And let's actually rename it to button to stay organized. Then go to the type tool, select it. And let's type subscribe. Then, of course, select the text and align it in the middle make sure you're holding control so it snaps into place you can adjust the uh, font size here and the uh, this font family that's completely up to you then let's select our button and click Control plus d and rename this to mat shout out to all the mats out there and bring this mat layer above our subscribe text and then click f4 until you see this track mat option and for the text track map option, click the drop down so where it says none and select set mat, set it to alpha mat. Then let's select mat and subscribe text layers and drag the pick whip and pair it there to the button. Just like that. Then move to one second mark. Select the button, press P for position, create a keyframe, then click shift plus S. And this will bring the uh, scale property as well. Uh, create a keyframe also, then move to the beginning of our timeline and zoom out a bit. And for the position, let's actually bring this down to the point where we no longer see it, like this. And also set the scale to zero. Then at this point, let's move to one second, select the subscribe text layer, press P for position, create a keyframe, then move a couple frames back and drag this x value to the to basically drag the text to the right to the point where we'll no longer see it on our button and then click away and drag grab this keyframe that we've created and put it at the beginning of our time make sure you're holding shift so it snaps into place just like that and then select all the keyframes press f9 go to the graph editor and drag this point to the left select this point then and drag the handle to the right all the way so if we preview this this is what we have right now all right very snappy and smooth so right let's continue for now at this point we need our cursor something that will be clicking on our button so uh i've got here this cursor so let me just drag the cursor to the new composition icon this will create a new composition out of it go back to our main composition and then in our project for uh, project space here you'll see that a newly created, in my case, cursor to uh, composition was created. So grab that to the timeline like this. Press S for scale and decrease the scale to your liking, something like 30 or like 35 more. Yeah. So this cursor, it's pretty much free. So you can Google something like YouTube uh, hand icon. This is one of the first that comes up. So get any one you like and yeah, just drag it on the timeline. Then select it, press P for position, make sure you're at one second mark, create a keyframe for position, and actually move the hand outside of the composition to the point where we no longer see it. Then move to two seconds, so move one second forward, and bring this hand and put it above our, or put it over our subscribe button, something like this. All right, then move 10 frames forward, and this is where we will be creating a click effect. So I've actually recorded a full tutorial on my channel that I, su I suggest you to watch in order to that because I really go in details and in depth on how to create this effect. And here I'll just demonstrate you without much of explaining. So go to two seconds, 10 frames, select the pop-up pin tool and create a four points like this, like that. Then click U to reveal all the keyframes. And from here, move five frames forward, one, two, three, four, five. Select the pop-up pin number one. You can see that this is the one. So and drag it ever so slightly so it bends and looks like it's clicking. Then move five frames forward again. One, two, three, four, five. Select this first keyframe. Control C and Control V to paste it. 
then select all three keyframes and press F9. All right, so our click animation is done here. If we zoom out and preview this, yeah, we're clicking. So that looks good. At this point, let's actually select you again and let's find this middle keyframe. So this is like the point of impact, this is the point where our finger is clicking. So let's create a marker so we can better visualize what's happening. So play, uh, click asterisk to place a marker. All right. And at this point, we need our bell to like appear to slide from behind of our button to the right to somewhere around here. So I've, of course, prepare the bell icon already. So, okay, let me actually resize it. So S for scale, resize it to something like 30. Okay. And let's position it to around here. Okay. And I've actually recorded a full-on tutorial on how to create this wiggly bell animation that I suggest you to watch if you want to learn how to create this exact wiggly bell animation. Yeah, so if you have your own bell, that's completely fine. So I use this bell as a template for like my own project. So uh, why not just use it here as well? So move to this marker that we've created two seconds, uh, 15 frames. And actually, let's pl let's place it like this. So the end point to this marker and select the bell plus P for position and let's actually move it behind our one to the point that we no longer see it create a keyframe then move 10 frames forward well actually no let's move to three seconds exactly and let's animate our bell to the right like so and select the keyframes press F9 and yeah so then go to select cursor Let's P for position and create a whole keyframe here. And then move 10 frames forward and place our hand, place the hand over the uh, the bell like that. And move 10 frames forward again, then select the hand and press U to reveal all the keyframes. And select these puppet pin one keyframes, Control, press Control C, Control V to paste them. And we have a second click here. Find the middle keyframe and place a, a marker to, to better visualize what's happening. So if you preview this right now. Okay, looks good to me. So go to this marker right here. So three seconds, 25 frames. Now we need to adjust the timing. So our bell uh, starts animating or actually wiggling at the point of uh, the finger clicking. So go to the bell icon. Of course, uh, if this doesn't make sense to you, make sure you watch the tutorial. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description and then this will all make sense to you. So select these ones and actually move them to something like this. Okay, perfect. Then go back to the main composition. And if, as you can see here, once we make a click, the bell will start wiggling. Perfect. Select the other hand again, press P for position. Now let's move to some like 4 seconds, 15 frames, create a whole keyframe for hand. Then move to well, actually 1 second forward from here, 1, 2, 3, so that's 5 uh, seconds, 15 frames. And let's animate our hand outside of the composition like that. Okay, then select all the keyframes for hands or for cursor. Pos I keep calling a hand because that's a hand pretty much. Yeah, so select the cursor's position keyframes and press F9. Then go to graph editor, select all the keyframes here, uh, drag this handle to the right and this handle to the left. All right, so if we preview this from the beginning, this is what we have so far. Click, click, awesome. Let's actually make the bell a bit gray. So right click, uh, effect, generate, fill. And let's select some like this grayish color. Looks good. And okay, let's move back to this first point of impact. So once we are making a click, we want our button to change the color to gray. And also we want our text to say subscribed instead of subscribe. Okay, let's start off with the color first. Select the button. Click the drop down, go to content, rectangle one, fill, and create a keyframe for color. Move 10 frames forward, and let's open the color property. And let's actually select the same gray color that the bell has. Click OK. All right. Now let's head over to the text. 
Okay, select the mat and subscribe text layers and press Ctrl D to duplicate them. And let's change the subscribe to text to subscribed. Subscribed. Okay. And let's actually select it. Press P for position. And let's move this app and make sure that you press the stopwatch to deselect all the previous keyframes like that. Okay, so bring it up. We don't see it, but that's fine. And at this point, we need to parent this subscribed text to the subscribe text like that. All right. And at this point, at 2 seconds, 15 frames, select the subscribe text, press P for position, whoops, and create a keyframe here. Then move 10 frames forward and drag the Y value like that so we can see our subscribe text appear. Okay. And yeah, so align it in the middle. And if we preview this, you'll see that it sort of like slides from the top. So that looks awesome. And let's go ahead and select the subscribe text and change the color of it to something like dark gray. This looks good. So if we preview this all the way from the beginning, you can see what we have so far. All right, pretty good to me. And let's actually go to seven seconds here. So the only thing left, or actually there are two things left. So first, let's animate this out. So of course, there are different ways of animating these. You can slide it to any direction if you like, but I'll use the simple scale down uh, animation here. So go to seven seconds. And here, click, right click, new null object. And we need to parent everything that's not already parented to something else to this null object. So cursor, button, and bell icon. Drag the pick whip to the null three, then select the null, press S for scale, create a keyframe, move one second forward and set a value to zero. And one more thing, move to seven seconds, select the cursor, Press T for opacity, create a keyframe, move one second, one frame forward, and set the value to zero. Then select these null scale uh, keyframes, press F9, and go to graph editor, select this point, drag it, drag the handle to the right, and this handle to the left, like that. And if we preview this, you can see that it animates nicely, it scales down, okay. So we could also add uh, sound effects. So I'll prepare the sound effect. I'll include everything in the download link in the description. So you don't have to you know, search for it yourself. So this is it. And uh, yeah, you can use any click sound that you like. I'll just use this one because, well, why not? Select it, double click L to see these waves and align them to the point of impact. So this is our first click. Bring them down like so. Let's preview. Okay, perfect. And let's duplicate this and find the second point of impact. Select the uh, duplicate sound effect, double click L, and do the same. Align these waves to the marker. And let's actually go ahead and preview this from the beginning all the way like that. So click, click, awesome and it animates out and that's pretty much it i really hope you enjoyed and uh, thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next tutorial